transient elasticity of liver the commonly known term is fibro scan the purpose of this presentation will be to educate the physicians or the primary care treating doctors to interpret the transient elasticity i will not be going in detail regarding when you ought to use a fibro scan or what are the false positive results of fibro scans or what are the clinical scenarios those will be published as separate videos this will be a very short presentation to help you enable to just interpret the fibro scan results when someone comes to you with a fibro scan coming into the transient elasticity of liver in india the commonly available two types of results that you would encounter in your practice is shown in two panels the one is the left panel one is also known as commonly known as the fibro scan this is uh, a product of ecosense ecosense is a us based company which initially produced the fibro scan machine and most of the standardization results of uh, liver studies are based on this fibro scan machine by the ecosense and in recently you will see these reports which are by fibro touch fibro touch is an indian based company which have produced the same transient elasticity 1d probe study basically the transient elasticity in liver the fibro scan or fibro touch it is used to diagnose two things one is the steatosis or the fatty liver second is a degree of fibrosis or in cirrhosis suspected patients so we will usually encountered with scenarios where patients ultrasound reports comes fatty liver you want to actually know is fatty liver or how bad the fatty liver is or you want to know is it a cirrhosis or is it a fibrosis the transient elasticity is going to help you but when some patients comes to you with the reports shown in these two panels either a fibro scan report or a fibro touch report you should know how to interpret this so talking about the fibro scan report to interpret it you will see 10 panels of similarly appearing uh, images these are basically 10 readings of the same patient whose average value is been mentioned above so we have something known as cap cap also known as controlled attenuation parameter so i will not be telling in detail what cap is or what how cap is considered just to understand cap basically represents steatosis of the liver steatosis of the liver or it basically represents fatty liver so if the cap score you can take as a vague score of 240 it ranges it varies but keep in mind 240 if the cap score is more than 240 you can consider there is steatosis or fatty liver is there if steatosis score the cap value is more than 300 that means it is a severe fatty liver or grade 3 or more fatty liver the second parameter that you should look into a fibro scan report or a transient elasticity report is the kpa value or it is also known as lsm value liver stiffness measurement in fact this kpa value or the lsm value represents the fibrosis so lsm value if it is more than 10 that means it is significant fibrosis is there so if you see the cut off values it changes some tell 6 some tell 8 some tell 10 so to be practically oriented more than 10 any lsm value is significant and he should be evaluated for fibrosis or cirrhosis one important another value in a fibro scan report that you should always have in mind is the iqr bar median ratio IQR bar median is nothing to do with the patient but it is a statistical interpretation given by the machine by itself which tells can this reports be statistically accepted or not so you need not go into the depth of it just remember if the IQR bar median is more than 30% or more than 0.3 that means you will have to redo the test the test is not done these 10 samples which i showed that is not done properly and you will have to redo it now coming to the fibro touch machine in fibro touch machine also the techniques slightly vary but the interpretation is similar so you have the uap value that is ultrasound attenuation parameter or pattern or similar to cap same values if it is more than 240 considered as steatosis or fatty liver then you have the stiffness that is the lsm liver stiffness measurement kp means kilopascal so same value the value is mentioned as 6.7 in this patient so if it is more than 10 consider it's a significant fibrosis you should evaluate him for fibrosis or cirrhosis 
then IQR by median as told previously if it is more than 30 percent these reports cannot be accepted. Grading of fat liver and fibrosis. In fact this has been actually lost its popularity because based on the criteria used this values changes. Though arbitrarily F3 or above is considered as 12.4 in practice 10 can be remembered and 15 or 14 can be remembered. F4 can be anything more than 14 or 15 or cirrhosis can be anything more than uh, LSM value more than 14 can be considered as F4 and significant fibrosis can be anything more than 10 can be considered as significant fibrosis. Same for steatosis the control attenuation parameter or the ultrasound attenuation parameter more than 240 can be considered as steatosis more than 300 as severe steatosis or severe fat liver. But these values are variable. LSM value based on the criteria used is it Babino or is it EASL. The cutoff values for the LSM changes. Based on the European society what you can understand is less than 7.1 is considered normal. More than 10 if a patient has more than LSM value more than 10 he is considered to have an F3 fibrosis. If it is more than 14 that means the patient has cirrhosis. And if the LSM value, KPA value is between 14 to 19.5, chances of having an esophageal varices in that cirrhotic patient is less likely. But if his LSM value is more than 21, that means he has associated portal hypertension and features of esophageal varices or ascites can be there. So this actually will help you even to predict about portal hypertension. So any patient in your clinic, if they have more than LSM value more than 10, KP value more than 10. He should be properly evaluated by a gastroenterologist to know if he has other complications of cirrhosis or portal hypertension or HU related issues. The take home messages will be LSM less than 10 KPA in general population can be considered normally. Between 10 to 14 F3 fibrosis so they are significant and should be evaluated should be sent to a gastroenterologist and LSM more than 14 is suggestive of uh, cirrhosis and they should be properly graded, properly evaluated, properly worked up for the etiology or the complications of cirrhosis and CAP value more than 240 is considered as fatty liver or steatosis. More than 300 means significant steatosis. IQR per median ratio less than 30% is required for a valid report. If it is more than 30% that means the report is not valid and it should be redone. So false negative and false positive results for LSM should be kept in mind of which we will be talking in further videos and risk group that is patients with diabetes, poorly controlled metabolic illnesses, hepatitis B carriers or infectious cases, hepatitis C carriers or patients with infections of hepatitis C or Bs, then family history of early liver disease or patients with coronary artery disease. These patients should be evaluated with a fibro scan or a transient elastography fibro touch to know if they are having any features of fatty liver or cirrhosis or fibrosis. And these points will help you in your practice in your day to day life. Thank you. And this shows how simple a fibro scan technique is. It barely takes 10 minutes for me to do a fibro scan or fibro touch. This small mission is a mission of a fibro scan or fibro touch. It takes less than 10 minutes to complete a fibro scan procedure. In the further videos, we will be publishing regarding other topics like false positive, false negative scenarios, other clinical scenarios, and when you should not use a fibro scan. Thank you.